Welcome to another Winning Solutions video. My name is David and I'm going to demonstrate the concept today of data validation. And this is something that gets often very overlooked when people are developing in Access for the first time. And when we work on projects, at least when I projects with clients that I work with, I'm very intent on making sure we have good data validation in our applications. What I want to show you really quickly is, this is not real data, but this is, the data you're seeing here is similar to an application, a project that I worked on many years ago. And the idea was this client wanted an address book. That's a long, that's the, a long story short. But I want you to notice some things that can happen when you don't have data validation in your application. For example, we have, well, this is Portland has the comma in it. Oregon is spelled O-R-E instead of the abbreviation. Now, maybe the abbreviation is okay, but then you have Idaho, one with I-D and one with I-D-A. Now, let's see what else. We have uh, a city where the address should be, a state where the city should be. The state is blank. Uh, the country is in the zip column, and I think there was a country column in this in this table. Um, you see, oh, Spokane is misspelled here. So if you're searching for an address in Spokane, you spell it correctly, this record is not going to show up. Same thing in here. If you search for Idaho, this record may not show up, or this one. Here we have the state and zip together in the state column. So I don't think I need to tell you, this can result in a mess really quickly, even if nothing else. If we had, there's, I didn't put any dates in here, but if you have malformed dates, when we tried to import data from Access into SQL Server, the biggest problem we have, the biggest reason that a, tra a data transfer will fail is because of badly formed dates. So. Uh, we'll have a date, that, um, this is not in a date column, but, you know, we have, someone puts in the date as follows, 2-15-2-21. I guess technically 2-21 is a valid date, I suppose, the year 221, but it's certainly out of context for what we're doing. Now, of course, they, they forgot the zero, but Access may still accept that as a date, but when you import it into another database, that may not accept it as a date. It's going to come back as an error. The entire, um, the entire migration is going to fail. Then you're going to have to go into a table which could have thousands of records and search for all of these badly formed dates. Wouldn't it be better to make sure, do as much as possible, to make sure that the data is entered correctly at the beginning? So let's go back to the Access application that we had on the screen. Right here, I have a very simple form that has the, the people table. So, you know, again, very, very simple. Uh, just first name, last name, city, state, zip, and birth date. I wanted to put a date in there. Uh, you, you can see there's certainly some problems with this, this table. The zip code's missing uh, missing a digit, birth date is entered with letters, there's no year here, um, there is a state that's, again, Idaho entered IDA, or you could even just put in something that's not even a state, and I put in all of this X, Y, Z. I put in all of this just using the form. I mean, basically what we did is we plugged in, we plugged in, if we look at this in design view, we just plugged in text boxes for all these. And to make matters worse, if, you, if we look at the design of the table, everything is short text, and that is the default that Access will give you. We want to use the state. We want to use if we if it's a state, we might want to ensure. Let's uh, 
we might want to ensure and you might not see the field size we set this to a field size of two you might want to show the zip is set for field size let's say of 10 right now you might want to be some more a little more flexible with these if you have international addresses um for simplicity i'm going to assume that uh, these are all u.s addresses here birth date as a text well this is several problems first of all it's not going to sort by birth date and secondly, it, you could get in badly formed dates that are not going to transfer. Now, it may not, I may not even be able to change some of these because I think we have, we already have dates that are not standard dates entered. So when I save this, it's probably not even going to let me. Oh, it did. I guess Jan, GAN5 is interpreted as a date. I'd like to see how that came out. Um, for again, we could shorten these data types. These are 255 characters, uh, just to save on space, but that's a minor thing, not really the point of what we're showing here. Uh, so we want to make sure that we have we start with data types that match what we're trying to do. If we had, let's say, age in here, I want to make sure that's a number, otherwise, we're not going to be able to sort. Let's take a look at what this table looks like. Okay, see, I, this, I think this was JAN5, and it did interpret it as, accident interpreted it as January 5th. Of course, it's 2021. The person's not a month and 10 days old. Uh, let's maybe put 2000. But you get the idea. Age, we haven't put anything in yet. But it shouldn't take this, and it doesn't. You see, so we have ways, one of them is data validation within the table itself to make sure that we don't have anything um, that doesn't mean our data. Now, if I, again, this was IDA under state, and I'm trying to put the A back in, and it's not going to let me because we limited this to two characters. But there's other things we can do besides just changing things in the table. As I said, you know, this is the original form. Now, we've improved on this somewhat because I, I, it will not let me. Okay. Or, I wonder if it'll still let me, let me do this. Okay, yeah, see, all right, gen, all right so that's fine. Um, but we may not want that. See, it, it's not even gonna let me do that. It, it took it as a text field. Uh, and, and we certainly don't want that. So I'm not going to go into a lot of details in this video, and I want to make it too long, but this is what data validation can give you. We have an improved version of that same form. And now, one thing to notice is that we put a state in a drop-down box. And not only that, it won't let me select anything that's not in the list. Even if it's only two letters, it's not going to allow me. It's going to give me that error message, and entered as not an item in the list. Now, of course, you can make, you, you can program these drop-down boxes to accept items that aren't in the list. And there are some cases where it will let you, and there are many cases where it won't. In addition, well, got to placate it somehow. Tennessee. Okay. Um, zip code, I put in something called an input mask. So let's let's blank this out. And you can see it's expecting 5-4. Now the, the 4 at the end, I think, is still optional. But I'm trying to type in. Right now, you can't see it on the, you can't see my keyboard. But I'm trying to type in letters and access is not even letting me type in letters. Uh, so let's just type in numbers. And I think that will be good enough because we have it. We have the input mask set up, so the last four are optional. You don't have to do it that way, um, but you, it will not let you see. If, if you still have to enter five digits at the beginning, and we didn't, and therefore it's giving us some uh, some trouble. Uh, date of birth. Again, we have an input mask here. Not as necessary since we do have, uh, we, we did enforce it to be a date data type. But you see, it still did let us enter JAN5 and it converted it to January 
5th, but which is fine, but that would be January 5th, 2021. I don't think that anyone you'd have any dates of birth that are, uh, you know, like I said, persons were for the person's a month old. So, um, you know, this ensures that you have a, di an, a, a state that's real, a zip code that's formatted correctly, and a birth date that's formatted correctly. So when you ensure right up front that your data is being entered properly, it saves a lot of headache later on. And that's why no user interface, in my, in my professional opinion, no user interface is ever complete unless you make sure that you're entering the right kind of data to begin with. It saves you a lot of trouble later. So thank you for watching this brief video on data validation. I, I can't emphasize enough its importance on being the importance of including data validation in any forms you see. Uh, it's something I emphasize a lot as a developer. Often I'll go into a database and I will see a mess. I, I'll see dates and ages all as text and that is just asking for all sorts of trouble later on. Again, thank you for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.